Welcome to the name game. Workout number 167 is sit and reach. Every minute on the minute until failure, complete a 10 second L sit hold, followed by one snatch. The snatch will start at 135 pounds for males, 75 pounds for females, and each will add 10 pounds per interval. We did it. And we're off. Um, so it's either going to be a fast one for those who are not good at Olympic lifting and uh, or else it holds. Or else it holds. Yeah. Um, for those who are wondering what? where Ben is at, he, I'm sure it's okay to say this. I don't know when this is coming out, but he had an appointment because his wife is pregnant. So they got they got a baby coming soon. So he's got to do his dad thing. Yeah, but he's in the video, so it's uh, yeah. He's just he's video. just yeah. He's just he's here with he's us. Still here. Spirit. Yeah. Yes. So how would you approach this workout day, or what 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 are you thinking about if you're going into this workout? Yeah, I'm thinking depending on what your weaknesses are. I know some people are not so great at L sits. Um, they have poor hip flexor strength or mobility or anything like that. That'll be the limiting factor there because those are, those are, ten, it's only 10 seconds, but they could be a long 10 seconds if you're not good at the movement. And then um, vice versa, if you're not so great at snatches, then that's going to be your limiting factor there. Um, but I think the, a big thing with this, this workout is a good warm up, kind of seeing how you're feeling that day on the snatches and also making sure you warm up well with those hip flexors as well get sure. prepared for those movements yeah i feel like it's a, it's good oh sorry it's the workout is like optimizing like those two moves uh, specifically the olympic lift so you really want to get a good warm-up in to prepare for that yeah i was gonna say there's not a lot of there's honestly not a lot of strategy that goes into this workout um because everything's pretty prescribed right it's an emom so it's not like you're gonna oh i could save time here by doing this here you got to get both in in a minute uh, the the L sit is pre prescribed 10 second hold, and then there's prescribed jumps that you're allowed to make in the snatch, right? So if you have a decent snatch, right, not even like a super heavy one, um, you can't make extra big jumps or whatever because you're afraid your hip flexors are going to get tired. So it's purely this is purely like a workout where it's like, okay, we're just gonna we're gonna see where our capacity is in these two movements um, with such prescribed time domains and weight jobs so. yeah and like another thing to consider here too is um like your hip flexors you're going every minute on the minute and doing it so if you need the the if you're used to like extended rest on a movement like that that's pretty taxing on that specific muscle group this is where it'll get pretty tough and then same thing with olympic lifting if you need if you're someone who takes an extended rest period between your sets this will also be um, a bit challenging because you have about 40 to 50, uh, 40 to like 30 to 40 seconds rest between. Yeah, I wish we had Ben on, although ho hopefully he'll figure something out to kind of get his opinion on this. But I'm wondering how I would be curious to find out where he felt the most fatigue, um, whether it was his core, his hips, uh, um, or, or, or you know even you can even feel some fatigue in your upper body if you're not super strong pressing to like hold that isometric position um i'd be curious to, to know that because like you said you get you get about thir 30 to 40 seconds of rest before having to do your next l sit but you know pro the problem is you have to change your weights and what a lot of people don't realize is like okay I'm going to close hip position while holding that asymmetric hold. I now have to get right into a dynamic position, but then I don't get to rest flat my hips really because now I have to stay hunched over and try to change the plates. And it seems insignificant, but like, I don't know if you've ever, ever done a workout day where it's like, you're super tired and it's like you have quote rest between cause you have to change the weights. And it's like, it doesn't feel like I'm for me. It's like, it doesn't feel like I'm really catching my breath cause I have to be hunched over trying 
doing this like simple task. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's uh, it makes a, a big difference there. Um, just like during those rest periods, you want to kind of just like do nothing, catch your breath, yeah, but you're yeah. moving around. Another thing to note here is um, you'll see Ben has the, the plates. So there is a prescribed height that you should be at for the l sit, So you can't cheat your way through that movement. The standard is the handles need to be four inches higher than the stack of plates. If you want to scale, this is one place you can scale. You can go to like eight inches or 12 inches from the top of the handle to your stack of plates. Uh, make it something where you're actually able to get up to a relatively heavy snatch wake, but it's still pushing you and your ability to do that l sit well. Also, just so you can get some good work in, I would recommend scaling the starting loads. If you're a male and your max is under 185, I would recommend starting at 95 pounds to start. And if you're under 125 as your max for a female, I would recommend starting at 55 pounds. Makes a huge difference. You can see I'm like, I think it's adding up at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Because he goes for, all right, based on, based on the video. Probably, 13 about, minutes? Yeah, give or take. So... He's, he's approaching kind of the halfway mark for him right now. So I'm assuming he's, some of these L sits are going to be like a fight for his life at some point. <laughs> Set number six. Six coming up? Or no, he's going to be because it's zero to one. Set number seven coming up. Yeah, he's he's already working pretty hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God, all sets are just so humbling every they're, time. They're the, I mean, they're the worst. And well, like, I know when when I have athletes do all sets, they'll always take off their shoes because they're like, any bit of weight counts. And if you have your lifters on, that's a little bit of extra weight there. Wearing my heavy lifters in this definitely made it harder to do the L-sit. However, for me, the snatch is gonna be the limiter, so I decided to do that. If you're gonna be limited by the L-sit, I would recommend wearing as light of shoes as you possibly can. What, uh, what, sports, what sports do you coach again? Uh, swimming, diving, uh, men's golf, and triathlon. Oh, I usually have a lot of the divers. I was about to say, the divers are probably pretty good at this. They're pretty good, yeah. They go for quite a bit. Do you have any um, of the other sports do these L sits? Um, I don't coach gymnastics, but I see gymnastics do them all the time as well. Sure. Yeah, and they're again good at that movement. Well, out of the sports that you coach, I, if you had to guess, which team would be the worst at these? Golf. <laughs> that was gonna yeah. be my guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the least athletic. Say, I, sorry, golfers. It's like the least athletic sport. <laughs> like anytime you hit a, a a golfing telecast, they're nervous about someone just making the walk. Oh, the walk is really gonna beat him up. It's like to me, I'm like, <laughs> no, man, that's that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, looks like he's got maybe like 210 on the bar for this upcoming set, 210, 205. Yeah. Because it's five pound jumps, correct? No. Mm -hmm. 10 pounds. 10 pound jumps. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. 185, 205, 215. Yeah. Yeah, he looks pretty solid there, a little forward. This is something yeah. like, as you go along, like these statches, you're gonna have to start squat satching them. I always like to tell athletes, no matter what the workout is, if it lets you power squat, start squatting the bar like a weight or two before you know you're gonna have to. Cause I, I personally, for me, and I don't know if you're the same way, day, it's like, if I know, let's say I'm gonna have to squat snatch 185, I don't want that to be the first time I'm getting into that overhead squat position, that first squat snatch. 
And so like for me, if I have to make 10 pound jumps, it's like, all right, well, I'm gonna wanna hit one at 165 and 175 so that it's not like, my body's not like, what the heck is going on here? What is this foreign movement you're having me do at this heavy weight? Um, I don't know if you're similar in that regard, but that's something I definitely have yeah. to do. I know for me, it's more of like the neurological side of it. Like I have yeah. to prepare my body to move fast and drop fast before I actually need to do it. Mm -hmm. That looked pretty solid. He's going to yeah, it was... 235 now. <clears throat> I'm curious what his, what his lifetime max is. Do you know? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Maybe this is where he could like edit in his face and he could just be like, it's 265. <laughs> it's 255. So on this workout, if someone, let's say, has a 200 pound max, let's just say, what would you assume or estimate their weight for this workout? Like, would you expect them to be like maybe 20 pounds below? I it, yeah, I think it varies. I know there are some people who, uh, and honestly, I might be one of them who snatch better in like a like a, I'll say a workout setting versus like a, a true like Olympic lifting style one rep max. Um, this is a little bit different though because it's an isometric hold. It's not like a, like row intervals almost into mm -hmm. where you have like this global like like my entire body is warm, greased up, you're kind of getting like local fatigue. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, with CrossFitters, they're weird. I can see people getting close to their, to their max. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Especially the, he the heavy lifters, as long as they can maintain the l -sit. Um And like you said, yeah. especially with the, the height of the plates, that, that could get dicey there. Um, and maybe that's something where, you know, it, when we go into when it comes to scaling right if you're not someone who has a very big snatch you know i would you could lighten kind of the starting bar weight to make sure you get a couple sets in uh or if you're someone who really struggles with the l-sit want to get some snatches and you could always lower um the height of the plates a little bit to make sure you get that work in but um yeah i would i think you'll have people get relatively close um but obviously i, I don't anticipate I wouldn't anticipate people like PR because of the fact it's mm. so it's such local fatigue in your hips and midsection and arms. Yeah. Yeah. And if like just doing an isometric holding that hip flexion and then going into a movement where it's very, very fast hip extension flexion, it's just it's a different ball game. For sure. Cause he's at 205, 225, 245. I think two, I think this one's 255. Okay. But that's why he's taking a little bit longer between sweet reps, trying to make sure he gets a go on here. Yeah. And yeah, based on how he's resting, this is probably in his head. He's probably thinking this is, this is probably the last bar. Maybe. Yeah, because in, in the previous intervals, he's he was starting his like 15 seconds after the yeah. move, and now he's at like 45 starting. JK, <laughs> lol. Good job, Ben. Yeah, that was good. Thanks for watching today. Be sure to share this workout and take it on with some friends. If you want to learn more about how to optimize your performance for the sport of CrossFit, or if you're interested in hiring one of our coaches, head over to ZorFitness.com. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe. Best of luck on the workout, and as always, stay the course.